Hi, my name's Eddie Wu, and today I'm going to walk you through proof by mathematical induction. Many of us play with dominoes when we were younger, and patiently setting up everything in a row has a tremendous payoff when we get to start off a huge chain reaction with a single tap. <laughs> mathematical induction is exactly the same. Once we establish all the pieces of the argument, they knock each other over in a brilliant demonstration of mathematical logic. And just like a row of dominoes, all it takes is a tap to make induction work. Mathematical induction has three essential parts. We test, we assume, and finally, we prove. I'll show you what I mean with an example. This is the induction question from last year's Maths Extension 1 HSC exam. It's asking us to prove that this statement is true for n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on until infinity. It might seem at first that this would take an infinite amount of time to prove. But the genius of mathematical induction just requires a few lines of working. I'll show you how. First, we need to test that the statement's true for its first given value. From the question, we can see that's n equals 1. We want to show that substituting n equals 1 into the equation satisfies it and makes a true statement. Remember to pay careful attention to this first value, which is sometimes called the base case. It's usually n equals 1, but on occasion, it may start at n equals 2 or some other value. Don't just guess. Read the question. Substituting the value into each side independently is the best way to go. First, we'll go with the left-hand side. This is the sum of all fractions in this form up until n on n plus 1 factorial. For n equals 1, that means 1 on 2 factorial is both the first term and also the last term. At this stage, we need to remember what the factorial function is. We first met this in the topic of binomial theorem, and it means taking a positive integer and multiplying by all the positive integers less than that. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. In our case, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. So the left-hand side is simply equal to a half. Now we can try the right-hand side, and going through the substitution shows that we get exactly the same result. That means our test succeeded, and we can move on to the next stage, assume. What we're doing here is taking the statement and assuming that it's true for a particular value of n. In other words, we've shown it's true for n equals 1, now we're going to assume it's true for n equals k, where k is just the name we're giving to our particular value. Going back to our dominoes from before, this is like saying if we select a particular domino, we assume it can be pushed hard enough to make it fall over. Now we're ready to make the magic happen. We've tested for n equals 1. We've assumed it's true for n equals k. And now it's time to prove that the statement's true for n equals k plus 1. In other words, if one will fall over, then the next one will fall too. This is the statement we're trying to prove. We've substituted k plus 1 into both sides of the equation. And even though we've written this down, we don't actually know whether it's true or not. We need to show using careful algebra that one side's equal to the other. We should start with one side and manipulate it till we can show that it's identical to the other side. I'm going to begin with the left. Now, something worth noticing is that the original statement has n terms on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to n. The assumption has k terms on the left, and the statement I'm now working with has k plus 1 statements on the left. Now, I can't write all of them out, but you can see I've included the second last and the last terms. Because when I do that, you can see that this line has something in it I can use. Everything in this line up until k on k plus 1 factorial is included in my assumption. That means I can use the assumption, also called the inductive hypothesis, and make a substitution. Remembering that I assume that these two are equal to each other, I replace one with the other. Now all that remains is to work with what's left behind to show that it's equal to the right-hand side. I can use my knowledge of the factorial function to get a common denominator for these two fractions, which then allows me to combine them into one. From there, it's very straightforward to show the result I wanted, and my proof step is complete. Now we know that if the statement's true for one value, then it must be true for the next value as well. That's like knowing that if any one of these dominoes fall, then the next one is also guaranteed to fall. But since we showed it's true for the first value, that means it's true for the second value, and the third, all the way to infinity. It's like pushing over the first domino, and the rest of them will come along for the ride. So remember, mathematical induction is as easy as giving dominoes a tap. Test, assume, prove.